So I had a subscriber ask me a question the other day and I figured I would make a video about that question and pretty much answering it. So the subscriber is not a huge fragrance collector but wants to start collecting. They have four fragrances in their collection and they asked me a question which I'm going to be answering now. The question was, outside of the fragrances that they had, Versace Dylan Blue, Blue de Chanel, Dior Sauvage, and Prada Lome, what other five fragrances from my collection, from cheapies to uh, designer or niche, would I recommend as super versatile fragrances that could be worn spring, summer, and fall? And so in this fragrance video, I'm going to be going over five fragrances from my collection that are super versatile for pretty much spring, summer, and fall, and even some of them you can wear into winter. And so without further ado, let's get it. All right, my great smelling dudes, welcome back to my channel. This is Randy, aka Fragrance Dude, back with another fragrance video. And before we get into the video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good shit, so we can get in straight into the topic of this video, which is, again, I answering a question from a subscriber who does not collect but wants to. Again, they have four bottles, I won't mention them again. But with that said, they want to know five fragrances from my collection that are great, very versatile for spring, summer, and fall, from cheapies to niche and not necessarily my top five, just five that I'm wearing right now. And so I'm going to be giving you those fragrances and I chose them based on the fact that I haven't used a lot of these on my channel yet and I wanted to, or that they're new bottles. Um, I haven't reviewed two of these fragrances yet on my channel, so here's the first ones to that. And so here's me answering that question. They did leave out winter. Um, they did say only spring, summer, and fall, so most of these are going to be just spring, summer, and fall. Some of them can be worn through winter, but for the most part, they're spring, summer, and fall. So uh, in the spirit of not keeping you guys here all day, I'm going to get straight into it with one of the ones I haven't reviewed yet by Ralph Lauren. It is Ralph's Club Eau de Parfum. Really nice bottle and what's inside it is really nice as well. I do want to give a little quotation marks here. Uh, when I was in my uh, live, I did a review of a sample of this, so I'm not sure if it was the sample or if it was just the way on first impressions, but I said it smells very, very, very similar to YSL Y Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum. Um, and honestly, now that I've got my nose on it a lot more and I have the full bottle and I wore it a bunch, it's only about 20% similar to YSL Y Eau de Parfum. It still has that vibe, that sage, that lavender, that sweetness. Um, but I just want to say I apologize if one of you guys did or did not buy it based on the fact that I said it smelled like YSL Y Eau de Parfum because now I am getting a lot different vibes now that it's sitting on me a lot more. Uh, with that said, Ross Club Eau de Parfum and Fragranica, I think it's very weird. I actually said this in my full review of it that's coming out this week, that it's really odd that Fragranica does not say anything about it being sweet because that's one of the main features of this fragrance is being sweet. Um, so anyway, I'll give you the notes first, then I'll tell you what's in the fragrance and what I get from it. So the main notes that you get here are lavender, clary sage, Virginia cedar, and vetiver. So as soon as you spray this on, you get that lavender and that clary sage in there. It's like a sweet lavender, but again, you also get some of these like sweet, ambery, fruity notes, and it almost feels like an amber wood, um, but it's really, really, really nice. Um, you don't get that woodiness. It's just more like an amber, so it's like a sweet sticky fruity lavender mixed with some clary sage in the background as you work your way into the dry down some of these woody notes do pull up although it's a bit muddled and there's nothing that really sticks out as virginia cedar or sandalwood or this or that uh, the only real note that you could pick out in this fragrance is the lavender outside of that it's just real jumbled but it's really good i mean there's nothing wrong with this fragrance outside of if you are a big stickler for um, performance, this is not gonna be one of those fragrances. You might wanna wait for the Parfum because the performance on this is about five to six hours at max. I actually get more about four to five hours with about two hours of moderate projection down to a skin scent or a little bit closer to the skin uh, after about two hours. But with that said, it smells really nice. You get that sweetness, that sweet lavender, that clary sage to give it almost a little bit of herbal fresh spiciness in the background. And then again, that ambery woods that comes up in the base. Outside of that, there's not really much uh, difference here. What's weird is that for the when I first smelled this, when this first came out, me and my wife both thought that there was leather in this. And if there is, it's in the dry down. It just doesn't say it here. 
but it does almost give a vibe of a little bit of leather in the dry down as well. But again, the notes are very muddled and they only give you four notes in the actual full note breakdown. But that's Ralph's Club, really nice fragrance, super versatile. You can wear it to work, you can wear it on a date, daytime, nighttime. Uh, I would say this revolves a little bit more towards the day, but with that said, you can wear it day, night, all for spring, summer, fall. This is one of the ones you could probably wear through winter as well. Um, but that eh, Ralph's Club, really nice fragrance. You should definitely get your nose on it. In preparations for the Parfum to come out, it's definitely a good fragrance. The next one it took an entire month before it arrived to my house. And this is the only niche on this list. And it is by the House of Mancera. This is Cedrat Boise. And this is the Eau de Parfum, not the extrait that just came out or the in Intense. I love, I love, 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 love the magnetic cap on this, but not only that, the atomizer sprays for like an entire two seconds. It's absolutely fantastic. But not only that, inside of this is absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is advertised as a woody, fruity citrus fragrance, and that is pretty much what you get. Uh, again, this is the only niche on my list. The main notes that you get in the Cedrat Boise are Sicilian lemon, black currant, bergamot, cedar, and moss. So I did my first impressions on the Cedrat Boise the other day, like I think two or three weeks ago. I had a sample of it, and now I have the full bottle. Um, really, it is one of my favorite fragrances already. Uh, it's more designer style niche than regular niche, and it is under $100, which if you find it on Jamba Shop for that price, is, is absolutely a steal. Because not only is it a fantastic fragrance, but it's a beast mode fragrance. They released the Intense this year, but I think that this is the better option because it's $100 cheaper, it lasts 10 plus hours, and it projects heavily for four to five hours, which is crazy. So for this, I think this is the better option. Uh, they People say it has Aventus style vibes, but just because they have black currant woods doesn't mean it's Aventus style. It's more closer to a smoother, better Hasavat. If you dial down that smoky mossiness and put it in the background, that's what you get from this. So in the opening, you get this nice lemon note mixed with black currant. It's like a sweet, zesty lemon with this fruity background. And then you also get a little bit of bergamot, a little bit of this muddled fruity accord in the background, as well as that moss and a bit of vanilla. It's really nice, it's sweet, it's creamy, it's fresh, it's invigorating. It's just really, really nice in the opening. As you work your way into the mid, you get a little bit of the floral from this water jasmine, as well as a little bit of earthiness from a patchouli, but not much. And then again, as you're working your way to the dry down, that lemon dissipates, the black currant mixes with that bergamot and the uh, muddled fruit accord, really just becomes a nice sweetener in the background. And then you get this versus the cedar coming in. Uh, the cedar really does have a nice woody accord, really does feel really good, feel very fresh, very natural. And then whenever you put those all together with that sweet black currant in the background, that oak moss pops up just a bit more. Again, not too much. It's smooth. It's nice. It's almost like a vanilla moss because you have that vanilla in the base as well as some musk. And the vanilla and the musk and the oak moss work really nicely together with the woods and the black currant to make it like a sweet woods. And it's really good. A sweet musky woods is the best way to put it as the dry down. So again, very good fragrance. One you definitely need to get your nose on. I was super shocked when I tried this. I was hesitant to try it. And then once I did, because I tried so many other Aventus style fragrances out there. Believe me, if you are sick of Aventus or those type of fragrances, this one is going to take you in a different path. And it's just, it's really good. So that's Mancera's Cedra Boise, the Eau de Parfum. Really good fragrance. And again, that's going to be able to be worn daytime, nighttime. To me, it's a little bit more formal than casual, but um, you can wear it both. Pretty much day, night, anytime. The next fragrance on my list is from a brand that I never thought that I would be mentioning on my channel, especially not in the list. It's a citrus aromatic fruity fragrance by the house of Yope. It is Yope Om Ice. And you're probably asking yourself if you didn't watch my video the other day, Yope Om Ice? That sounds like a lemony or a citrusy or like a daytime fragrance. No, it's not. Uh, the name is very confusing. It should it's it should have like a darker name because it's a deeper, heavier, darker fragrance. Uh, the main notes that you get from Yopom Ice are plum, grapefruit, cardamom, and sandalwood, among a bunch of others. But uh, really, this fragrance I got it for twelve bucks, and it's really good. 
Uh, it lasts about six hours and it projects for about two or three above average. Really decent for this type of fragrance. If you're looking for a random pull on a rainy day or in the fall, if you're going somewhere, you're going for a few hours, Yopum Ice would be great. Um, so when you first spray this on, and you get a little bit of this bergamot and lemon mixture to give like a background citrus and then you also get the main note in the opening which is plum the plum is not like rosacea wasp where it's watery it's more of a heavier deeper fruitier plum than what you get in this rosacea wasp um, again this is like mont blanc's individual uh, if you make it deeper and you took away a little bit of the sweetness even though it is still very sweet individual is a little bit sweeter so if you know what individual smells like, you don't know what this smells like, just kind of, they're very similar. Uh, so once you get into the mid, you get a bit of tobacco as well as a bit of cardamom to give it like this sweet, fresh spiciness. The citruses dissipate. The plum is the main note there as well as a little bit of cardamom. When you get into the dry down, you do get some sandalwood coming in there to give it a bit of a woody base. You also get a bit of musk, but for the most part, it's that plum, it's that cardamom, and it's that sandalwood that just mixed together very nicely to create this warm, sensual, uh, fruity, sweet fragrance. And that is, it's synthetic, yes, but at the same time, it smells really nice. I didn't think I would like a Yop, and I love a Yop. Yop Home Ice is great. It is a very versatile fragrance for what you'd be looking for. And if you're looking for something cheap, don't want to spend a lot of money, but you want to get good quality, Yop Home Ice definitely gets you there. So again, that's Yop Home Ice. That is the third one on my list. The fourth one on my list is actually going to be another one of my new fragrances that I have tried before. I've had a bottle of it before, but I just had to buy a new bottle, which my wife caught it for me. And this is going to be one that I'll be reviewing for the first time later this week by Prada. It is Prada Luna Rosa Ocean or Prada Ocean. It's advertised as an aromatic musky lavender fragrance. And that's pretty much the only things you need to know from this fragrance. Uh, so there's a cap that comes with all the bottles. It's not really a cap It's just a for traveling so that the atomizer doesn't get hit down Just wanted to show you that as well as now that I'm thinking about it Most of these fragrances that I'm listing here have like the best atomizers in my entire collection This one sprays amazingly not only far, but it hits a wide area The Cidra Poise as I showed you sprays an incredible amount And then the next one on my list is really good as well so the main notes that you get in Prada Luna Rosa Ocean are bergamot, lavender, iris, and musk. So you think to yourself, Luna Rosa Ocean, is it watery? It's aquatic? No, it's not. And you, it's another one of those like Yop Om Ice. The name just does not match it. Um, it's almost similar to if you've ever used that uh, hand sanitizer called Ocean from Bath & Body Works. It's similar to that. It's a little bit darker, a little bit heavier. And honestly, I didn't like this at first because it feels a little bit dated um, in the opening, especially. It feels like just a natural blue fragrance, like a blue de Chanel mixed with a couple other things. Uh, it just feels a bit dated to me, um, just like a dated version of blue de Chanel almost. But it's only for the first little bit of time. You get that bergamot in there. You get those citrus notes. You get a bit of spice from the pink pepper. Uh, it's, it's a really good fragrance in the opening. It's just it feels a bit dated. Um, then it completely changes about 15, 20 minutes into the fragrance when you get that iris coming in. When the iris comes in, it starts to feel more like a Prada because Prada is known for their uh, linens, their soaps, their cleanliness, and their fragrances like the Prada Loam line. And so the iris, while it's not as powdery as a Prada Loam, um, it definitely feels like a Prada iris fragrance. Um, it's not the main note in there. You still do get those blue aspects in the background. It's almost like if you took the two, like a blue version of Prada Loam and put it all together, it is really, really good the way that they do it. And then when you get to the vase, you get a bit of patchouli, a bit of vetiver, and it is a musk heavy fragrance, especially when you get about 45 minutes into the fragrance. It's just a iris musk. And that's the best way to put it. You do get a bit, bit of this dryness from the vetiver, but all, to, all together, Prada Luna Rosa Ocean, it's really good. It's not going to be anything that blows your mind, but it's one of those fragrances. Again, I didn't like this at first, but once I started getting my nose on it, I wore it for a while. It is great, especially in the heat. 
Um, I don't know why it is so good in the heat because it's like a little bit heavier, deeper. You wouldn't think so, but it is really good in the heat. But you can wear it daytime, nighttime, heat, uh, cool weather. I just wouldn't go too cold. Like I don't think it would be good in the middle of winter, but as far as spring, summer, fall, it would really do good. So that's Prada Lunarosa Ocean. As far as the amount of time of wear, I get about uh, six to eight hours on average. And it's a little bit above average, moderate to above average for the first three, and then it turns into a skin scent, um, or a little bit of above a skin, skin scent. But it's actually really good, one that you definitely need to get your hands on if you can find it for a good price. I would probably pay about 80 bucks for this fragrance, really good. All right, Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. And then my last one, I, I had to put one in there that was a crowd favorite, especially my favorite. Again, this isn't my top five, but if I had to put some of them in my top five, I'd probably have two from this list, including this one, Rosasi Hawass for him. So Rosasi Hawass is a fruity citrus aquatic fragrance. The main notes that you get from it are plum, watery notes, cinnamon, and musk. So that's a weird mixture of notes. Plum, cinnamon, does it sound right? No, yeah, it, it's really good. So you get this watery plum in the opening with a background of bergamot, a bit of the spice in the background as well. Uh, as you work your way into the mid, that plum stays there pretty much throughout the entirety of the fragrance along with those watery notes. It's in your face. It's a beast mode fragrance. It's going to last at least eight to 10 hours. Uh, for this type of fragrance, it's just, it's a boss fragrance. Um, it's going to project heavily for the first four hours at least. Um, once you get into the mid, you get this really nice cinnamon note mixing with the plum and it mixes really well. You get some woods and some musk in the base. I'm not going to go too heavily into this fragrance other than to tell you it is amazing. And you can get it for 35, 40 bucks for the most part on most sites. They sell them on Amazon for about 40, 45 as well. And that's where they sell them uh, from the brand Rasasi. So you don't have to think, am I getting a real one? Am I not? You are, especially if you're ordering it from Amazon. So Rasasi Hawass, really cool bottle. Smells great. It's like Invictus Aqua. It's that type of aquatic fragrance, although this was made before Invictus Aqua. This is an eau de parfum, by the way. Uh, so really, at the end of the day, it, that plum, the musk, the woods mixed together with a little bit of that cinnamon, really, really good. You definitely need to get your hands on it. If you like fruity aquatic fragrances, this is probably the best one out there, Rosacea Wasp. And with the Fruity Aquatic, you can wear it spring, summer, fall. It does have this deepness to it as well, which allows for it to also be a nighttime fragrance if you so choose it to be. So some people actually say Rosacea Wasp is better for night. I like it better for day, but with that said, I wear it day or night. And sometimes if you spray it in the morning, it's gonna last you to the nighttime anyway. So anyway, the five that I have, Routes Club coming out this week, as well as Prada Ocean coming out this week. Uh, we have the Cedrat Boise, which is my nice uh, citrus, fruity, um, Aventus type of fragrance, but more has more moss and more depth than Aventus. In my, in my opinion, it's better. Uh, we have the Yopa Ohm Ice, which is really good, and the name doesn't match up to what it is. Rosacea Wasp, Fruity Aquatic, really, really good. So let me know what you think about these five fragrances. To me, they are super versatile for those uh, spring, summer, fall. They're going to, oops, my tie got messed up. Let me fix it. There we go. All right. Um, so yeah, they're really good. They're very versatile. Day, night, spring, summer, fall, really good. Let me know what fragrances that you would choose. Um, I also, again, these aren't my top five, but if they, they could be, um, there's some of them in here that would definitely be in my top five. But anyway, thank you guys so much. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll be back with another one. Peace out.